Now, there used to be an app in the store called EMU 7800, which emulates both the Atari 7800 and the 2600. However, it was removed because Microsoft doesn't allow emulators. So let's take a look at what we can do about that. Well, turns out, if you already have it installed, uh, it'll still run, but it's an older version. So we're going to go get the newer version from the developer's website, actually from GitHub, and you'll see that we have a, a new version that works basically the same as the version it did. But first of all, let's take a look a little bit here. We see here, this is the version 2.2 uh, from the store. Now, what's interesting, though, this one has a search button at the bottom, which allows you to import your ROM files into your directory and all that. You can't do it anymore, but at the end of this video, I'm going to give you a manual procedure uh, to move stuff around. Now, there's a link on this page to go to it, but I'll conclude the link in the uh, description of this video. Now, you could go ahead and go right there and download it and try and do it all yourself, but a couple of quick tips here. Uh, one is that you might have some difficulties downloading it because it'll be blocked by Windows. I'm going to show you the procedures to get past that. And the other is the managing of the ROM files so you don't have to face with a long, long list. So when I got there, the one thing I noticed right away was that it had a June 9, 2021 release uh, just about a week before I made this video. So he has a new version out, uh, 5.00, a uh, lot further along than 2.2. .2. So you can go down here and you can look for the EXE uh, in order to download uh, for your particular system uh, so you can run this and install it. Now I'm using the Edge as my browser, so when I, it pops up a box there and then I click on Save As, and I'm going to put it in with my uh, uh, different games and things wherever I want to have it. I'm going to go ahead and say OK. But Edge, in combination with Windows, blocks it because they say it's maybe not safe. Now, because this is a file, OK file, you can just click on the three dots and come down here to say keep. It'll still warn you uh, here that it's only because it's not regularly downloaded. So I'm going to go ahead and click on here and say keep anyway. And it's going to go ahead and allow the download to proceed. When this happens, uh, for, and for my own peace of mind uh, on a new program, uh, I'm, I go ahead and look at the file afterwards. So here's the file location. I'm going to right click on it. I use uh, Microsoft Windows Defender and it's going to run a scan on that one file. See if it comes back with anything. And nope, it's perfectly fine. And there's all the compressed files inside it scanned because it unpacks the zip. And so we're good to go. But I also have Malwarebytes installed, the free version, just to give myself a secondary uh, method of checking files for viruses. Because uh, it's not loaded already like Defender is, it takes a little longer for it to come up, but it does the same thing. But it reports just one file, but it's really the, the zip, and it didn't find anything either. So we're good to go. Well, so we'll go ahead and we're going to click on it to run it, and we're going to find out that Windows itself is now protected because it doesn't follow the install rules, so it doesn't have the manufacturer registered with Windows. So we're going to click on More Info here. And we're going to say run anyways. So the installer finally runs, and here's it, here it is here running. Now it wants to install it uh, a certain place. Uh, you can change it wherever you keep your files at. Uh, just choose wherever you want it to install. So it goes through that process, and I'm just going to say OK to run it. And there it is, one last click. It goes ahead and installs, and there's the launch. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Now it's launched on my other window, so I'm going to drag it over here, and sure enough, uh, here's the emulator. By the way, I still have my other one running, my one from the Windows Store. If you look back here, uh, I'll get rid of that one once I've tested this one out. Be aware that if you do uh, uninstall the, the Windows version, uh, you won't be able to get it back uh, because it's no longer in the store. Now once you run it, at first glance it looks a little confusing because you have these scrollable columns here, uh, first two are 2600 7800, but then you've got some by the manufacturer. Uh, you, you can scroll uh, those as well if you like a certain manufacturer. And eventually it gets into uh, the name of the person that developed it. These are all repeats of those other first two columns. You don't need to look here to find a file. It's just categorizing them uh, this way. No matter uh, how you, you find it and launch it, You'll see that uh, when you click on the game, there's a land to do one of my favorites when I was a lot younger. 
When you click on the back arrow to exit the game, you'll go back exactly where you launched it from, from the menu, right here in the middle of all the different uh, development companies in that. Now, it is important to note that after you're done with it and you want to run it again, uh, and click on Play Atari Today, uh, you'll see that it has a column called Recents now, so it saves your most recent games in a separate column, which makes it a lot easier to find something that you were enjoying yesterday. But if you look at the menu closely, you'll see some have a pause symbol instead of the run symbol. Every time you quit a game in the emulator, it saves your current progress to its database, so you can resume exactly where you were uh, the day before, the last time you played the game. Now, there are other emulators that will do this, but you have to actually save the game. Uh, but that's okay, because you can save more than one uh, progress. This one here, you only have the last uh, place you were at. So you're in a game and you have all these different information from all these different places, but you don't care about a lot of these games. Some of them are pretty bad. Uh, or you have some favorite ones like uh, California games, things like that. Well, here's how to reduce this list. The method's a little unconventional, but with a little proper planning, uh, you can uh, go ahead and remove some of these. So we're going to go down to the properties box for the game. And down here at the very bottom, you see right here it says open file location. I'm going to do that, and here it actually is. Now, there's the ROM directory, and you'll see there's a bunch of zip files here. Now, we're going to remove some of these files in here, but before we do that, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to copy it. It takes it a second to copy all those files into memory. And I'm going to paste that another copy in, which again takes a moment. And now we have a copy of our uh, game directory. So I'm going to move this over to my desktop temporarily. Uh, and it will remove it from this area because it's on the same drive. And as you know, when you drag something on the same drive, it moves it. But now we're going to go back to the ROM directory over here. And I'm going to move it as well, and just to demonstrate something. So what I've done is I've created an empty ROM directory. Now it still shows it now, even if I go out and come back in again, because it's reading off a database. So I'm going to close the app. And I'm going to come back in again and have it open up and bring it in from the other window. There it is. And if I click Play Atari Today, you'll see no files. So all you have to do now is to uh, bring in some files to that ROM directory. So I'm going to click there, OK? And I'm going to click on my saved one. You knew there was a reason for it. And I'm going to drag in one of these. Uh, it doesn't make any difference what. I'm going to drag it in over here and let it go and say Copy. And sure enough, there it is. So I still have a copy there. And go back, go back in, nothing. <clears throat> so what do I do? Restart it. When I restart it, come back over, and there it is. I go ahead and say play Atari today, and boom, there's that small subset of files. You notice it kept the recents, and also you'll see that it still indexes by the person's name or the company, and that's because those are built into the file, so it's reading the header of the file. You're never going to be able to get rid of those in this current release of, of this program. But to call this list down even more is that I don't have to take an entire zip file. I can go ahead and take individual zip files uh, from there and just do those. So if I go over here, and you'll see all the files that are uh, located in the zip file. It's just because they are. Uh, no reason other than that this was included. So I'm going to deselect some of these, and I'm going to delete all the rest. There's just a few files left. So we uh, delete all the ones that we've got uh, selected and get rid of those and say yep because it from a zip file so it's going to permanently delete them and they're going to be going here in a second. In the meantime there they are being deleted. In the meantime we look and there they are. That's all that's left. So what should happen? Well I think you know by now uh, that's the only thing that's in that ROM directory are those files. So if we launch the, the program again, it will reread those. If we click here, launch the program, and we expand it again, say play Atari today, boom. All we have are these six programs. And we have, of course, cat or seven. We have them categorized by its type, but they still list the um, publishing company and the author of the program. But you only have to deal with a few columns here, a few entries in your 2,600 and 7,800 columns. So with a little work, uh, there you are. You can run asteroids. Um, 
Asteroids 2 or a 1984 version and easily find uh, some of your favorite programs that you put into this directory. Uh, there's backgammon I used to play a lot too. Oh, and I love two-person basketball. So anyways, there you are. There's how to manage your files in the uh, EMU 7800. Now what's really nice about this is that if you take a look at the information screen down here, uh, you'll see that it tells you about well, what it is and how it does things and all that. It talks about putting the ROM files there. But what's important to note is the game controllers and how it supports even two at the same time controllers. So you could play with a friend, for example, if you have two set up on your system. So I'm not going to cover that. If you have a game controller already hooked up to, or you're going to hook one up, whether it's a Atari 360 or a PS4, whatever you have, uh, you can try that and see if it works. It should be okay. So there you have it, EMU 7800, a very quick and simple way uh, to play some old Atari games. Hey, if you found this video helpful, don't forget to like the video. If you want more, don't forget to subscribe. You can also follow me on Facebook and Twitter. The links are in the description of this video.